Hi, welcome to Right to the Top. I'm Adam. In today's video, I want to talk to you about punctuation. And I'm going to start looking at the comma because this is one of the more confusing punctuation marks because it has so many different uses and so many different contexts where you need to use it, where you shouldn't use it, and where you have the option of using it or not using it. Okay? Now, before I get into it, let me give you a little bit of a setup. There's a lot of information to know about the comma. There are a lot of rules, a lot of exceptions, a lot of situations. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to split up the video into three parts. Today we're going to look at part one. I'm going to just look at the conjunctions. I'm going to look how to use the comma with and, but, for, so, yet, and so on, because these tend to be the, uh, the more confusing ones, especially for those of you taking the IELTS, TOEFL, or other English exam, and you need to write an essay. Okay, so what we're going to do, how we're going to split up this lesson, we're going to look at three things. We're going to look at commas in lists and series, A, B, and C, etc. Compound subjects and predicates, and we're going to look at compound sentences. Now before I get into it, it's very important that you understand what is a predicate. Okay, if, you if you're not sure, I have a video, there's a link up top here, to what is a clause because a predicate is part of a clause. A clause is a complete, you can make it a complete sentence that has a subject and a predicate. A predicate is basically the verb and everything that you need to complete the meaning of that verb in relation to the subject. Okay, and you can watch that video. This is going to be very important when I compare pre uh, compound predicates to compound sentences. It makes a big difference, especially in terms of how you use or don't use the comma. Okay, so let's get into it now. So we're going to start with lists and series. Very basic introduction. You have item A, item B, and item C. You can write it with the comma, you can write it without the comma. This final comma before the last and, before the last item, this is called a serial comma. Okay, it's a, called a serial comma. You don't necessarily need to know that word. Now, should you use one or the other? Well, the serial comma, more common in North American writing. Non-final comma, non-serial comma, more common in British writing. You can use either or. Use one or the other. The key, and this is the most important, be consistent. If you start your essay with the serial comma, and you have a list or you have a series of items, make sure that if you have another list or another series, you continue to use the serial comma. Don't have a serial comma at the beginning of your essay and a non-serial comma at the end of your essay. That's a problem. Choose one, stick with it all the way through. That's the only thing you need to worry about in terms of the final comma, yes or no. For now, there's going to be other issues we have to look at. So, examples. And you can, remember, you can put a list or a series at the beginning of the sentence, in the middle of the sentence, at the end of the sentence. It, it Basically, where it fits is where you're going to use it, but the rules don't change. Media platforms, should be an S here, let me just add that here. Media platforms these days include television, radio, internet, and mobile devices. Okay? So, all kinds of things. I have four items, television, radio, internet, comma, and mobile devices. And you'll notice here, I don't use the comma. This is okay, this is okay. Let's look at another example. Municipal, provincial, municipal, provincial, and federal governments work too. You have a, in the beginning, you have your subject as a compound. All of these things, municipal, comma, provincial, comma, and, or again, without, oh sorry, without the comma. Both are okay. Just be consistent. Beginning, middle, end of the sentence, doesn't matter where you're using it. Okay, so far so good. Easy stuff. Now, if the list includes a compound, make sure not to separate the two. So basically what happens, if your items, you have A, B, and C. Let's say C has its own and. Okay, so the easiest way to understand this. Most large companies have different departments, such as human resources, finance, and research and development. So here I have two ands. This second and is part of the compound. So research and development is one thing. It's one item. And you're using the and to join the two pieces of this item. So you still have human resources, one item. 
finance, the second item, and research and development. So here, there's no problem. It's very clear, I think everybody can understand. This is the final and, this is the compound and. But, if you're not using a serial comma, such as human resources, finance, and research and development. So now, in, in this case, most people know research and development go together, but if you have a list where the compound is not clear, is it finance and research and development, or is it finance and research and development? So right now, I'm not sure which it is, right? And that's why, so it could be one, this could be the, sorry, this could be the compound, or this could be the compound. So it's not very clear. This is why sometimes the serial comma actually has advantages because it makes the compound item very clear. But if you don't want to use the serial comma, if you don't want to use the final comma, there's other ways you can fix this. And the more, the easiest way to fix it is just put the compound at the beginning of the list. So have different departments such as research and development, human resources, and finance. And this way, I don't need to use the serial comma, but it's very clear what the items in the list are. Okay, so that's the easiest way to avoid the compound problem. Now, if any of the series items, let's say you're going to give me a list of things or a series of items in a list, if that item has its own comma, then you might want to use a semicolon. So let's look at an example. The committee will be chaired by Ron Stone, who will lead the budget panel, Linda Weston, our keynote speaker and aide to the president, and Gail Feist, our VP of Finance. But if you look at this sentence, I got comma, 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 a lot of commas. Now here, it's actually pretty easy to understand what the items in the list are or who the, the people in the list. The committee, a group of people, will be chaired by. Chaired means the leaders, the people running the committee. So it's very clear that you're looking for people's names. If you have a list of things with adjective clauses or some sort of phrase giving you extra information about that thing, and that adjective clause or that phrase has other things, then for the reader, it becomes sometimes a little bit difficult to know when the list splits when the items are separated because you have so many commas and it's very important you have to remember when you're writing the reader the person who is going to read your writing trusts you to make everything clear trusts you to separate items to make things clear so how are you going to do that for for him or her when you have too many commas separate the items with a semicolon instead of a comma. Even on the last one, you still need the semicolon and, but make sure that way you have the comma is part of the item, the comma, where is it? That comma is part of the item and that comma is part of the item and the items are separated by semicolons. That's the easiest way to avoid that confusion for the reader. Okay, now, so I talked about and, 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 but, or, same rules. The retreat costs accommodations, all meals, and local transportation, but not uh, flight or taxes. You can have, in a list, you can have and, but together. It doesn't matter. You can have and, 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 but, or something, 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 but not something. Okay? And then same with or. Papers may be submitted by email, fax, or mailed in hard copy. Same rules. With comma, without comma, up to you. Okay. Now. If you only have two items in your list, it's not really a list, then it becomes a compound, okay? Treat it as a compound, no comma between the two things, A and B, okay? You will only be allowed to bring with you into the test room a pencil and a bottle, okay? So those are your two items, no comma, it's just a compound predicate that you're using here. However, unless the two items are independent clauses, so let's say you're about to introduce two items following a colon, like the two dots, then you might want to separate them with a comma. In many countries, elected leaders must uh, meet certain criteria in order to be elected. Colon, meaning I'm about to tell you what those criteria are, and there's only two of them that I'm mentioning here. One, they must be native born. Two, and they must speak the country's official languages fluently where applicable. So in some countries, more than one official language, 
they must be able to do. Now, if you if I said they must they must be native born, they must speak, then I have a run on sentence. Now, technically, this is not a compound sentence. Th these are just two items in a list. But you wanna if you're gonna use full independent clauses, they subject must be verb native born complement, okay, and then they must speak. You have subject verb, uh, subject predicate, whatever. If you're going to have two independent clauses, separate them with a comma. Or, and in this case, I have they, and I have must, and I have they, and I have must. If I have the same subject and partly the same verb, just get rid of them all together, okay? Why confuse the reader? Why write more than you need to? They must be native, so after the colon, two criteria, they must be native born and speak all the country's languages. Make it simpler, use one subject, one, uh, one subject, one verb, and the compound predicate. They must what? Uh, be and speak. Easier, no confusion, no problem. Hope everybody's following me, there are a lot of examples still to come up. Let's look at the compound. So I mentioned compound predicate and I mentioned compound sentences. So compounds can be compound subjects. You have A and B will do. You have compound predicates. The drills will involve both native and non-native speakers. Will involve whom? Both native and non-native. Two objects to involve. That's your compound predicate. The drills will involve both native and non-native speakers and will last 10 days. So native and non-native speakers, objects to involve, and will, and drills, will involve and will last. So in both cases, notice I also don't have commas because I'm using compounds. So when you have a compound predicate or you have a compound subject, no commas are necessary to split the, the items in that, in that compound. Okay, the drills will involve both native and non-native speakers, their trainers, and an inspector. Again, doesn't matter if you have two items, three items. Only two items in the compound, no comma. As soon as you get into a list or a series, then you're adding the commas as before, as with the lists and series we looked at. Now, here's a, where we get into a little bit of a problem. Okay, read this sentence. In the past, schools encouraged boys to pursue engineering and they encouraged girls to pursue the arts. If you're writing an essay about how school uh, curricula have changed, how gender roles have changed, etc. Very simple sentence, easy to understand, no problem. Okay, uh, here, and they encouraged. I'm going to talk about whether why I didn't use a comma here in a moment, but the key point here is some people are going to try to reduce this sentence because I have schools encouraged boys and they encourage girls. So schools encouraged, they encouraged. I have the same subject, the same verb. I want to take out the second one, right? Here's what happens. In the past, schools encouraged boys to pursue engineering and girls to pursue the arts. Most people will look at this sentence and say, yeah, no problem. But I want you to think like a reader and read the sentence very quickly and pay attention to how it's set up and where the line cuts and goes to the next line. In the past, schools encouraged boys to pursue engineering and girls. What? Schools encouraged boys to pursue engineering and girls. They should pursue girls? No, they should study. They should pursue engineering. This is where the confusion happens. Where this... When a reader is reading quickly, he or she will get stuck on that girls. They won't go on to pursue the arts. Because here, I'm putting the two things together as a compound. So engineering is an object to pursue, girls is an object to pursue, the same pursue. So this is a little bit confusing, right? So this is what you want to make sure you avoid, and this is where the comma comes in. In the past, schools encouraged boys to pursue engineering and girls the arts. Take out the other pursue, put in this comma here, to separate the two items so there's no confusion for the reader about what they're supposed to pursue and who's supposed to pursue what, okay? So I hope that's a little bit clear. And this is a very common problem where not using the comma makes it a bit misleading because the, the two th separate things look like the same object, like a compound object to a, simple, to a single verb. So you have to be a little bit careful about that. Now, if you're not sure, 
If your sentence is a little problematic, change it. In the past, schools encouraged boys to pursue engineering while girls were recommended the arts. No confusion here. It's not a compound sentence anymore now. It's a complex sentence. I have an adverb clause instead of a coordinate conjunction. And I'm using an active verb and I'm using a passive verb. Uh, encouraged boys, girls were recommended. I have vocabulary variety. I have sentence structure variety. I have a good sentence, no confusion. And I'm using the comma with the uh, adverb clause. Now, another thing, last note about the compounds. The general and his top officers will attend the conference in Vienna. The general and his top officers, this is a compound subject. There's no comma here. It's a plural because I have the general and the officers all together. I have a plural subject. But a lot of people don't realize that you can only make a compound with and. Okay? The general, along with his top officers, if you're going to use along with, if you're going to use a preposition, make sure you have a comma and a comma to separate that prepositional phrase. And the subject is only the general. The officers are not part of the subject. The subject is singular, the general, and then your verb agrees with that. Together with, same thing. As well as, same thing. Without his, same thing. And now I'm making it a more of a negation. But not, same thing. But only and can make a compound. Everything else, between commas, okay? And you leave the subject singular. Uh, just a quick note again here. Both A and B, no comma, all of A, B, and C. Remember, both means two, either means two, neither means two. As soon as you want to make a longer list of three, four, five items, you're using a different preposition and you're adding commas. Both, either, neither, no commas, all of, one of, none of, with commas, and then your list follows that. Okay, so let's look at number three, compound sentences. A compound sentence joins two independent clauses with a coordinating conjunction, and, but, or, etc. The internet allows consumers to research a product before making a purchase, and it ensures that they have the best information about prices to avoid overpaying. So notice that here I'm using the comma to separate the two clauses. Why? First of all, I have long clauses. When you have longer clauses, you want to separate them to make it clear to the reader that you're showing two different ideas, two complete ideas. However, because I have the same subject, it and the internet are the same subject, we're talking about what the internet does, I could take out the comma. However, I don't recommend it. When you have longer clauses, leave the comma in there so it's very clear that you're separating them. However, having said that, if you want, you can because it's the same subject, you can take it out and make a compound predicate. The internet allows consumers to research a product before making a purchase and ensures that they. Here, notice I don't have the comma. But also notice that I don't have a compound sentence. I don't have two independent clauses. This second clause doesn't have a subject, so it's not actually a clause. So what I have now is a compound predicate. The internet allows and ensures. That's your compound predicate, and it's long, but it doesn't matter because it's not a compound sentence, and then you don't need the comma. Now, the internet provides information and it lets people connect. Short sentence, short clauses, don't need the comma. If you want to put it in, that's fine. You don't need to. And whenever you don't need a comma, don't put a comma. Less is more. Less is better in writing. Okay? The internet gives users information and users give internet companies data. Here, I have a short sentence, short clauses, but I am using the comma. Why? Because, first of all, I have internet and users. I have two different subjects. I have the same verb, but I have different types of information. The information is going in different directions. The internet gives, users give something to somebody else. Different object. Users is the object, internet companies are the object. So when, when too many things are different in the two clauses, use a comma to separate two complete and independent ideas. Okay? Let's look at another one. He offered and she accepted. He offered and she accepted. 
he, she, different subjects, offered, accepted, different uh, verbs. But because it's so short, the comma has absolutely no function here. You just don't need it. It's very clear, very easy for a reader to understand what is happening. You don't need it. If you don't need it, don't use it, okay? Now, most people who go to malls look at stores items, but do not purchase much, if anything. If I can take out the subject of the second clause, take it out. But if not, that's fine. Here, because the ideas are short, the clauses are short, the ideas are related, I don't, I don't bother with the comma. If you want to put the comma in this sentence, that's fine. You don't need to, try not to. And don't be afraid. If you're not sure, put the comma. But if you have enough confidence, take it out whenever you can. In part two of commas videos, I'm going to look at how to play with it, how to bend the rules a little bit. There are a lot more rules coming, that's why it's separate videos. Most people go to malls and look around at various stores. But unless an item is on sale, they will not purchase anything. Notice here that I have an adverb clause between the coordinating conjunction and the independent clause. As soon as you put something between them, make sure that you have the comma before the coordinating clause because you're changing focus, you're changing pace, you're changing the build of the, the structure of the sentence and therefore you need to have that comma so the reader can make that adjustment. You're putting in that pause for the reader, okay? Many retailers use gimmicks to lure customers into their stores, but customers these days are much more attuned to this manipulation and avoid these tricks. The first clause it stands by itself. The second clause changes focus to what the consumers do. So con uh, customers are and avoid. So I have the and without the comma, but again, I don't have a compound sentence. I have a compound predicate. Customers, subject, are and avoid. Two things, okay? That's why here, because I have a completely different structure, I'm putting the comma before the but to make sure that the reader knows there's a different structure coming. Students may write a final paper or they may sit for the exam. Again, I can use the comma, I can take it out because I have the same subject, I have the same or very clearly related ideas here. Or if, you, if I'm already gonna take out the comma, I'll just take out the subject and the verb. Students may write a final paper or sit for the exam. Why use more words than you have to? If you're already taking out the comma, take out everything that you don't need and make it a tighter sentence. <clears throat> so, for, yet. With these conjunctions, always use a comma. The reason is these words can be used in other forms. So can be a con coordinating conjunction, it could be a preposition, it could be an adverb clause conjunction, it could be a quantifier. Because it can have other functions, not separating it with its independent clause may lead to confusion. He was not prepared for the test, so failed. Uh, okay, that's a little bit too abrupt, doesn't make sense, so we're not gonna use this sentence. He was unprepared, so he failed. Technically, it's okay, but he was unprepared, so. So can be thought of in a quick read as a quantifier. A little bit formal, a little bit old-fashioned, but still can be confusing. I don't wanna confuse my reader. He was not prepared for the test, so he failed. Put the comma, have your two clear ideas separated, no problem. He failed, yet he persevered. He failed, yet he persevered. Again, you can put the yet in both ways, and therefore it's confusing. Don't use this, and then use this. He had studied hard, yet he failed. He was not prepared for the test, so he failed. The, co the co conjunction for, don't even use it. It's old-fashioned, nobody uses it so much anymore. But if you are gonna use it, use it with a comma, okay? Now, that's a lot of stuff. I know there's a lot of information there. You may have to watch the video again to get the finer details. This is just the tip of the iceberg. There's a part two and three still to come. I'll do those later, those videos. Commas can be tricky, but if you're ever not sure if you need it or not, just put it in. in again, we're talking about conjunctions. In other situations that, that can actually uh, hurt your cohesion, but we'll talk about that separately. Now, if you have any questions, please ask me in the YouTube comment section. If you like the video, give me a like. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and I'll try to give you some shorter videos next time about grammar, vocab, other stuff. See you then. Bye-bye.